Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Don here from Nova Spirit, and today we're going to be coding a web browser for Windows 10 IoT on Raspberry Pi 2. So let's get started. Alright, to get started, we're going to need Visual Studio's 2015 Community Edition. And yes, it's free. I'm going to leave all the link in the description below, that way you don't have to zoom into my browser and try to grab the link or anything like that. Alright guys, keep in mind that this takes a long time, almost half an hour on 8 core CPU with SSD. And for those of you who are on Windows 10, remember to enable developer mode, which is also in settings, update, and security. Okay, once we start our Visual Studios, we're going to present it with our screen. I'm going to hit new project, and we're going to want Visual C Sharp blank universal windows. And we're going to name this IoT browser. Now it's going to create the project and all the files that it needs to and it's uh, containing folders. Here you're going to present it with like a bunch of stuff that you don't have to really worry about yet. Again I taught myself how to code so my terminology might not be correct at time so bear with me for a little bit. Okay here I'm going to go into a main page XML and this is where you're going to design how everything looks. I start off with this because that way I know where my buttons are, what I'm going to be clicking, stuff like that. Right now you don't see anything and the scale is really weird. You could change this by uh, adjusting to whatever screen you want. I'm just going to choose something that's more represent my screen. Alright, here we're actually going to be creating a couple of objects. Let me move some stuff around. And we're going to be doing some grid definitions. Um, to be honest, I created this code earlier and I'm going to be copying and pasting some of the code. This way I don't have to retype everything and have typos and explain that. So I'm going to explain the code as I go down the list, but I'm not actually going to be fully typing it. So here, we are going to create two row definitions. The first one would be the top bar of a height of 65 pixels and the bottom would be actually our web view and that's gonna be a star and that means it's gonna take the rest of the remaining space. Now after we define how this layout would be we're gonna have to fill in the layout and filling in the layout you go to the next line so here we have our stack panel and in here where this is where we fill out our layouts the top one we have our text box that's where we're going to be typing our uh, URLs and what you really have to worry about is um, the this name you see how this one says click web go click and then key up because we're actually going to have a key up operation web address key up and also the name of um, the property this way we have an idea of what's going on and you could also pre-fill the text like here it says bing.com which you could change that to anything else like uh, youtube.com it's not going to load anything because that's not what, how we have it set up as but it could pre-fill uh, ahead of time so the next panel we have is our web view uh, this is going to take the remaining area after 65 pixels that we took for our top banner and our web view is actually where our website would be viewed it makes sense web view now after we set up our layout we're going to have to go into the coding part I just did it by double clicking the go button and I actually create a property that says web click uh, web go web click or you could actually access it from inside here on the right side okay from here this is where we're gonna fill out our code and it's gonna be short it's not it's actually very easy to fill out this code and the first thing we're gonna do for our web go click is uh, we're gonna create a new function and we're going to call it do web navigate. Uh, it's red right now because we actually don't have that function yet, but we're going to be building it. Next one is remember earlier we did a web address key up and basically what I wanted to do on that was once you hit the enter key, you'll actually do the same thing as click and go. So here I have the void web address key up if key press basically if e dot key equals system virtual key dot enter you could change it to anything else web do navigate so it's going to pull the same function 
uh, it's going to run the function web do navigate. Now here is our main code where we're actually going to web do web navigate. And here it's going to be private async. Now we're going to be running it in async just so we won't stop the browser from hanging. So instead of uh, coding is very linear. So if you code it one at a time and uh, if statements are in the way, if you don't put an async in there, it's going to freeze until the code is finished executing. So uh, that's why we would put it in async. If we're going to load a website and the website takes five seconds to load, your browser essentially be frozen for five seconds. And we don't want that. That's why we would put it in async. Now in here, we're going to do the try block. So try and catch. And in here, we're going to put if web address length is greater than zero. That means if this bar that says youtube.com right now is greater than zero, meaning if there's nothing there, something will happen. If there is something there, it will do something. So if it's greater than zero, it will actually do web view and navigate the URL address that is inside your text box, the web address.txt. Or else, well, else. If it doesn't have anything in there, it will actually pop up a dialog message saying you need to enter a web address. And then it awaits to, uh, for the dialog to like confirm. And if there's any problems, it will catch it and it will display the error in the exception E. It will display the error message in a dialog box. Now the reason why you see this little red thing that's happening is because we need to add another uh, function up here using window windows dot ui dot pop-up I believe yeah pop-ups once that gets filled in all the red errors go away at this point you're done with this whole web browser and all we need to do is debug it so let's try that out now while we wait for that to go what we're gonna need to do on our main desktop is switch it from 86 x86 to ARM up on top device you would have to switch it to remote machine address would actually be the name of your device name so if you never changed it it would probably be min win PC authentication mode would be none you hit select and now that's all set up for the remote machine now as soon as I hit um, F5 start debugging it will send the code over to my Raspberry Pi Windows 10 and it will load the operating system. I mean, it will load the program that we just wrote. And there we have it. It's loading. And let's check out YouTube. If you see the debugging things up on the top left and top right, that's because it's, uh, it's on debugging mode. If you actually ran this as a full application, it won't have those. So, we got YouTube going. I highly doubt Netflix would work. Uh, maybe in the future when they do get um, hardware acceleration going, but as of right now, I, I doubt it. It's. I'm going to show you an example. Alright, so let's click on a ME video that just happened. Loads pretty quick into the next page. It's in a mobile view, so that's why everything looks so funky. I could actually change it to our desktop view, but you see, uh, we're just looking at the graphics to see if it plays smoothly. It seems to be alright, but you see how it's their choppiness right now? So I doubt it's going to play YouTube. 
and I, I don't think it has flash on here. It's got. Uh, I think it's running off HTML5. Okay. Let's try something else. I'm gonna type in a web address up in here. What's my browser dot org? Enter. And you are using an unknown browser. Okay, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Technically, it is unknown. Uh, let's see if the Netflix page would load. Netflix.com. I, I don't have a Netflix account, so I can't really test this, but the website does seem to load. I don't know, maybe. Okay. Now I'm going to stop the debugging. And you see how it exits the program? So, I didn't think there was any mind-blowing effects into coding a web browser into Windows 10 Raspberry Pi. It's more of a proof of concept instead of fully functioning browser. It's still got a long ways to go because Windows 10 still doesn't support hardware acceleration yet. And until that comes, we're really not going to see any uh, media extensions working on this thing. Right now, this would probably work in a consumer outlet where maybe if you had a large screen, hook this thing up and have a carousel of images floating around and stuff, that would probably work. So if you enjoyed this video, please share, like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, hack till it hurts. Thanks for watching my video. Please take a moment to subscribe. It helps me a lot. And if you haven't watched my previous videos, I'll post the link right here.